Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The purpose of the first Sunday in the month is that we gather together to praise God. Um, we praise God for seeing us through the last month. And because the elders say that if we are grateful for what have been done for you yesterday, then you will receive fresh blessing. So we thank him for the past so that he can bless us for the future. He has taken us through January. He has brought us to February. If we praise him very well today, then he will see us through February. And then we'll be able to come back in March, praise him for February, and then he will see us through March. Shall we go ahead and just praise the Almighty God, give him glory, bless his holy name, worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us throughout the last month. Thank you for seeing us through the ups and downs. It's not by our power, not by our might, that we have been able to see a new month. It is because of your mercy, Lord. We are very grateful. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all adoration. Blessed be your holy name, King of kings and Lord of lords. Blessed be your holy name, ancient of days. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for protecting us. By land, by sea, by air. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we are on this side of eternity. Thank you for allowing us to see another man. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration, Lord. I'm especially grateful, Lord. Thank you for being with me throughout the last month. Thank you that in all my journeys in January, you were there for me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for health. Thank you for security. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for everything, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, ancient of this. Glory be to your holy name. I praise you, Lord. I magnify your holy name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. May your name forever be glorified. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want you to lift your voice to him and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let me be around this time next month to praise you again. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Almighty God, I praise you at the beginning of February. Please let me be around 
to praise you again at the beginning of March. Please, Lord, by your grace, by your mercy, by your support, by your protection. Lord God Almighty, please let me be around again to praise you by this time next month. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Then we want to pray practically for every one of us. We want to pray for businessmen, businesswomen, traders, professionals, artisans, everybody who has to do with finance. And I think that includes you. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, on behalf of all these people, let your wind blow. And let it blow in their favor. Oh yes, go ahead. Let your wind blow in favor of all businessmen, businesswomen, professionals, artisans, traders, all who deal with money, all who deal with finances. Let your wind blow in their favor this month. Let your wind blow in their favor. Thank you, Father. Romoshante, the Kere Mokorum, the Kere Makashatu, Korum, the Kere Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And this last prayer is one you pray if you want. But I will want to say to the Almighty God, Father, in this particular month, let your wind blow in my favor. Go ahead. Talk to him. Let your wind blow in my favor, Lord. This particular man. Oh, Almighty God. Let your wind blow in my favor. Let it blow mightily, mightily, mightily in my favor. Let this. The wind of the Holy Spirit blow in my favor, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are grateful. Oh, Lord, we are grateful, Lord, we are grateful, oh, Lord, we are grateful, Lord, for what you have done for us, hallelujah, we are grateful.
Ancient of days The unchangeable changer The one who never grows old The I am that I am Glory be to your holy name Thank you for all you did in January Thank you that by your grace we are still around Thank you for protection Thank you for provision Thank you for your support Thank you for defending us Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name My Lord and my Savior We are committing especially Your children who are businessmen Businesswomen Professionals, artisans, traders All those who are involved with one financial situation or the other Father, this month, let your wind blow in their favor <laughs> And all your children who have been faithful In the payment of their tithes and in the giving of their offerings Father, this month, let the wind blow in their favor <laughs> And every one of us, Lord Who are worshipping you today this month in particular, let the wind blow in our favor. <laughs> and please, Lord, have mercy on Nigeria. <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. I want you to prophesy to one or two people, shake hands with them and say, the wind will blow in your favor. <laughs> and then you may please be seated. Thank God that thus far He has helped us um, I've always told you That I'm not a prophet I'm a pastor But I do hear from God once in a while The Lord told us at the beginning of the year, He said, uh, The wind is already blowing. <laughs> and He said, There's nothing we can do to stop the wind. <laughs> and I, you remember I explained about the wind blowing. I said, The elders have a saying that when the wind blows, you will see the enos of the chicken. Which means hidden secrets will come into the open. We are just in February. And several secrets are already coming into the open. The wind is already blowing. There's nothing we can do to stop the wind from blowing. So I'm appealing once again to all my children. If you know you have any secrets that you don't want exposed, you better do something about it fast. Because there's nothing we can do to stop the wind. Because we haven't seen anything yet. Too. The wind is already blowing. I made the wind blow in your favor. Yeah. And I'm going to beg you to pray for Nigeria. Ah. You remember God also said at the beginning of the year that things are going to get worse before they get better. How many of you remember that? Now, if you know the value of the Naira to the dollar, 
by January 1. And you compare it to the value of the Naira to the dollar today. You will know it looks as if this little boy heard from God. The reason we have to pray and pray with all our strength is that when he says things will get worse before they get better, we don't know how worse. We don't know how far down we will go before we begin to climb again. So please, with all your heart, I want you to begin to cry to God and say, have mercy on us. Let the downward turn end very quickly. Because when things get worse, it's innocent people like you and I who will suffer. Am I correct? doesn't matter how much they are changing the dollar for now. There are some people who are secure where they are. Like I said on Friday, or was it on Thursday, at the Holy Communion service. <laughs> the governor does not need to know the cost of petrol. Is that correct? <laughs> he doesn't want to know how much petrol will fill his tank. He wants to go out, he just gets up, gets into the car, and off he goes. The governor doesn't queue at petrol station. Does he? The president does not need to know how much they sell bread. Stand of his business to get to the table when he wants to eat and eat. It is common people like you and I who can tell that at the beginning of the year, this is how much they are selling rice. A bag of rice. Uh -huh. But today, this is how much they are selling. Because we have to buy. So we need to cry to God, please, because of we common people. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You are here, somebody say, God, have mercy. All right. Exodus chapter 15, verse 1. Exodus. 15 verse 1 Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he thrown into the sea I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The Almighty God will fight your battles for you. You will sing a new song of victory, of success, of prosperity. No matter how hard things may get, you will always have more than sufficient. I've been asked to speak on let the wind blow. I say hi. <laughs> let the wind blow. The wind is already blowing. <laughs> I don't have to beg the wind to blow. But when we are talking to businessmen, businesswomen, professionals, etc., etc., et let the wind blow could mean 
Let there be a way out of a dead end. You see, because if you read Exodus chapter 14, you know the story there. Exodus 14 was talking about the children of Israel on their way to the promised land. And then they look behind them and they saw Pharaoh coming. They looked to their front and they saw um, the Red Sea. And they found themselves between the devil and the <laughs> Red Sea. What do we do now? You can't go back. The front is blocked. And some businessmen will know what I'm talking about. But then the wind blew. And all of a sudden, the Red Sea parted. For all of you who are businessmen, businesswomen, professionals, traders, the wind will blow. Because the wind has to blow for you to be able to move forward. Oh God. Nobody knows the problem of a businessman or a businesswoman who borrowed money from the bank to do a particular project and then all of a sudden there's no money to finish the project. And the bank doesn't want to hear. Steadily the interest will continue to grow. Ah, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the wind will blow. When the wind blows, dead projects will come alive. In Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10, the Bible told us about dry bones. And the Bible said, they're not just dry, they were very dry. But the wind blew, and all of a sudden, the dry bones began to live again. Several times, as I drive through some great cities of the world, and I see abandoned houses, abandoned factories, deep within, I cry to God for the people concerned. Because when you want to build a house, the day you lay the foundation, you are looking forward to the day you will do the dedication. But somewhere, somehow, something goes wrong. And then, there's no going forward. And there's no going backward. Every one of you is finding yourself in a dead end. The wind will blow. I remember very well when I was a lecturer at the university, well, one of the universities, I better don't mention the name now. And there was a young fellow in one of the departments, nobody knew. But uh, the head of the department had told him, as long as I'm the head of the department here, you will not be promoted. And what do you, what, what how do you handle that? When a guy says no promotion for you, for whatever reason. And the young man gave his life to Jesus. And the wind blew. How did the wind blow? There was a coup. And when there was a coup, for one reason or the other, uh, there was a change of uh, head of department. And when the new head of department came, he said he wanted to see the fires of everybody. 
they search and search before they could find the file of this man because of God had hidden the file. By the time they found the file, they found that he has not been recommended for any promotion for years. And so the new head of the department gave him double promotion. In the name that's above every other name. Those of you who are stagnant, those of you who have not been promoted when you should have been promoted. Those of you in a tight corner, the wind will blow today. And then the wind, let the wind blow could mean something else. Because when the wind blew, and the wind blew at the Red Sea, suddenly there was a way where there was no way before. There was a new way, a way through the Red Sea. A way nobody had ever passed through before. You know, when the wind blows, God can just give you a new idea. A new idea nobody ever thought about before. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 He said When you find yourself at a junction You hear a word behind you Say Hey this is the way This is the way you should turn You know In business A new idea Brand new idea that nobody ever thought about before can be given unto you. I mean, in Genesis chapter 30, from verse 25 to 43, Genesis 30, from verse 25 to 43, the Bible tells us the story of a man who went to his in law. And said, in law, I've served you all these years. I want to go and be taking care of my own people. Allow me to go. Ah, the in law said, no. Ah, since you came, since I've been going well with me, so you can go. Just tell me how much you want me to pay. <laughs> and the young man said, I will come back. And he went and sought the face of the Lord and God showed him a vision the almighty God will show you a vision and so he came back to the in-law and said sir let's do something any time the sheep or the goat or the cow any time they give back to a baby that has stripes that will be my wage if it has no stripes it will be yours <laughs> the in-law said fine how many, how many sheep and goats will ever have stripes he didn't know that this man has seen a vision <laughs> and so whenever they, so they, they separated all the animals with any stripe at all far away from where this boy was and uh, the boy now said every strong animal that is pregnant God told him just take a piece of wood make stripes on the wood put it in front of the animal when they are drinking water it is what they see that they will produce <laughs> Within years, all the strong animals had been transferred to this boy. Uh, the children of the in law said, This man has stolen our father's uh, blessing away. He didn't steal. God gave him a vision. God is going to give somebody a vision. You remember the story? Of that man who was an accountant 
accountant in a very big organization. And suddenly it just occurred to him, how long am I going to be saying yes, sir, yes, sir? At the end of the year, they will write a very good report and uh, they will increase my salary. But I'm still saying yes, sir. How long will this continue? God give me an idea. And God gave him an idea that sounded very crazy. What was the idea? Anytime you want to roast granite, add a little bit of honey. What, what kind of business is that? That is from God. And so the boy began, <laughs> began to roast granite with honey. Everybody tasted it and said, ah, this one is different. When they were installing, I think, I can't remember which of the president in America, it was this man's granite that they served. By the last time we heard about him, he already had five jets from selling granite. <laughs> I pray for someone here today. Before this time next year, people will look at you and say, uh-uh. Yeah. When the wind blow in your favor, the third thing that can happen is, according to the text that I read, you will sing a new song. After the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea and they looked back and all their enemies were gone, they sang a new song. So I will sing unto the Lord. In Psalm 40 from verse 1 to 3, Psalm 40 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible tells us this. That I, I, I waited patiently on the Lord. I cried unto him. He heard my voice. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Moses was not a songwriter. He was a politician. He didn't go to the school of uh, music. But you see, when God does something great for you, Suddenly you find yourself composing songs. <laughs> and the song might be just hallelujah, 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 but it will be a song. I decree that there's somebody here who will sing a new song this month. You see, when, 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 when you read Numbers 11, from verse 31 to 32, Numbers 11, 31 to 32, the children of Israel said to Moses, ah, Oh God, every day, manna, manna, we want to eat meat. Meat. And God said to Moses, yeah, Don't worry, I'll give them meat. Where is the meat going to come from? If I kill all the animals, it's not enough to go say, hey, Leave me alone. I will send my wind. And the wind blew. And the Bible says quills came from all over and surrounded the camp for kilometers in each direction. The wind of God can blow in. I, I, I mean, a breakthrough that is difficult to explain. You can be poor today and within a week you can become extremely rich. Amen. I've seen it happen. I can give you several testimonies. And it will be your turn to testify. And we just remind you of two stories. You've heard them before. After the two stories, the time to pray. I told you of a friend of mine. When I was very young, 
in the 1950s. I was in the secondary school. My parents were poor. You had that one before. It was so poor. It was, it was a miracle that I was in the secondary school at all. They sent me to the secondary school because I decided if we don't send me, I won't eat. When they saw I was about to starve to death, they started selling everything they had. But this friend of mine, his parents were poorer than my parents. <laughs> That's poverty squared. They couldn't even finish primary six. So one day, everybody had gone, we have gone to school, uh, and this boy was doing child labor, hoeing the backyard of a certain man somewhere in the bush, in, I mean, the outskirts of the town. And all of a sudden, his hoe struck something that sounded funny. And so he checked and checked, and suddenly he found a very big pot. When he checked, he found that the pot contains coins, gold coins. You know, in those days, <laughs> some people don't take their money to the bank. Uh, I mean, several coins. So he took one of the coins to a goldsmith. And that one looked at the thing and said, uh, okay, knowing the boy to be a small boy, he said, I will give you so much for the, for the coin. The boy said, ha. Because he didn't, he had no idea how, <laughs> how precious what he had brought. The way he said ha, the black, the goldsmith thought, he, he thought, oh, okay, so you are, you are wise, you know I'm about to cheat you. The, the man said, okay, I will double the price. The boy said, ah, ah. <laughs> to cut a long story short, the man kept on increasing until he said, I will pay you five times what he originally. So, my friend couldn't say, ah, ah, anymore. He, he just shook his head. Okay. <laughs> so the man said, <laughs> Uh, do you have more? The boy, ha, I do. And he brought in all the others. And the ghost me bought all of them. It wasn't long after that I didn't see my friend again. Because rich people don't, they don't befriend the poor. I decree to somebody here today, your level will change. I tell you another story. Some of you have heard it before. But it is appropriate for what I'm saying to you today because the wind can blow. And within a day, things can change. You remember the story? The story of an Arab boy who gave his life to Jesus Christ. And because uh, in the country where he was, they were going to kill him for, convert, for converting to Christianity. He ran and landed up in uh, London and came in without papers, etc., etc., just managed to get inside. So he couldn't get a good job, and he, so he was working in a fast food restaurant. Very poor. I mean, those who were employed, they knew he had no option, whatever we pay him, that's all. Then one Arab man came to London, loaded with money. He wanted to buy houses. He couldn't speak good English, and he didn't know the procedure. So he will go to, he will see a good house, go to the house, and tell the owner, me, house, buy. <laughs> and the one will say, stupid fellow, get out of here. Who told you I want to sell my house? So the, the man had been going around and around, and he was tired, hungry. Then he saw this sign, ah, they are selling food here. So he branched. And as he sat down to be served, he was grumbling in Arabic. Stupid people, I want to buy houses. 
they won't say. And the boy heard him speak and say, and spoke to him in Arabic. What's the problem? Ah, you speak my language? The boy said yes. Ah, and you speak English too? The boy said yes. And the man told him, this is my problem. Uh, could you come and be my interpreter? The boy said, ah, no, 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 I have a job here. <laughs> he said, I will pay you. The boy said, how much? He said, one million pounds per day. <laughs> For three days. <laughs> the boy said, please don't go. He went to the owner of the restaurant. Bye bye. The owner of the restaurant says, if you go, and you come back, and one employee says, ah, we never come back. There's somebody here today, in the name that's above every other name, this month, you will pass the border of poverty. <laughs> Let me close. When the wind blows, whether it blows on your favor or not, depends on whose side you are on. Because the wind that blew, that opened the way for the children of Israel, is also the wind that blew, that drowned Pharaoh and his hopes. The wind that is blowing, as you can see in Nigeria, that is already exposing some level of corruption that we didn't know existed before. The same wind can blow prosperity into some time, into some lives. Many a times it is when things are hard that God's children prosper. Amen. On whose side are you? Are you on the side of the Lord? Or you are against him. That's why this morning, if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, do so. The wind is already blowing. If you want the wind to blow in your favor, it must be on the side of the Lord. Your salvation must be solid. So if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, I beg you, come now. I'm going to count from one to seven. After seven, if you are not already in front here, I will continue. The choice is yours. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. It's your choice. You want to keep on struggling. If you want to remain at a dead end. If you want to remain just where you are, just managing to survive, your choice is yours. That if you want the wind to blow in your favor, you have to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Four. Oh, you say, what will my friends say if they see me going forward? Ah. <laughs> Your friend can't even help themselves. Not to talk of helping you. We are now asking you to come to the side of the one who can help you. Surrender your life to him so that your future might be all right. All your five. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, please. Six. Seven. 
Okay, those of us who are already in front, let's cry unto the Almighty God and ask Him to be merciful unto us. Ask Him to please save our souls. Tell Him we want to be on your side, Lord. We want to begin to do your will. Just forgive my sins, save my soul, and I will do your will for the rest of my life. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. Those of you on the way, continue to pray along too. Ask God to have mercy on you and to save your soul and forgive all your sins. And the rest of us who are sure of our salvation, please stretch your hand towards our brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Pray that God will give them genuine salvation. That they will become children of the living God. Please pray for them. Pray for them. And if there's anyone still on the way, you have to hurry up. Because I must pray now for salvation. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so, Savior, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for those who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come now. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Father, give them a brand new beginning. Please, Lord, save their souls today. Receive them into the family of God. And from now on, whenever they call on you, answer them by fire. And don't let them ever backslide. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I rejoice with those of you who have come forward. From now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Uh, you, the counselors will be attending to you in a moment But I want to pray for everybody now So stay where you are right now uh, The rest of us who believe that The wind might begin to blow for you today Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah <laughs> My Father and my God I have delivered your message I thank you because you spoke to me clearly at the beginning of the year that the wind is already blowing. All I'm asking for this morning, Father, is that for all these your children, the wind will blow in their favor. That from this moment, anything called stagnancy will come to an end in their lives. I'm praying, Lord God Almighty, that a new way of doing business, Christian way, divine way, that will move this your children rapidly to the top, reveal to them in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for all your children who are listening to me right now, Please, Lord, let your children begin to sing a new song. A new song of success. Of promotion. Of anointing. Of serving of the Lord. Please, Lord, everything they need to serve you, miraculously, begin to provide. Let it be well with them. And in a moment they are going to be praying. They will be asking you for breakthrough in a particular area of their lives. Please, Lord, whatever they ask for today, this very day, grant unto them. And I pray that together we will serve you to the end. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Well, you're going to be praying. You're going to ask God for the wind to blow for you in a particular area of your life. But before you do that, make sure you spend at least another two, three minutes to praise Him. Because when you praise Him, then He will move. So go ahead, praise Him, and then ask Him for breakthrough in a particular area of your life. Let's go ahead and begin to talk to the Almighty God.